Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, March 15th, 2018, episode 42. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. And there's a lot of stuff out there to fill your head with fear porn. Not that we don't look at fear porn, but... Uh, we just, we just don't uh, inundate you with it. So we'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lulls. And uh, we really have two stories today that would fit into the uh, lulls of the day. But the one story is we're going to call lulls of the day. The other one is just a lulzy story. You'll find out what that is. got to keep listening, everybody. You can get show notes at iState.tv slash H042, which is linked in the video description. Today's show is titled Afrin Under Siege. And on today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Afrin Under Siege, Fed's Bigly Record, Cell Sex and You, China Tariff expansion, and more. And if you're watching this show, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please be sure to share this show. If you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. Afrin now fully surrounded, and the water has been cut off. The tragedy of Afrin is ramping up as the Turk Reich has now cut off the city from any outside ground aid. And they've also cut off the water supply, and this is from, from Al Jazeera. Well, well, first let me say the siege of African, Afrin it has begun, and meanwhile, in Europe, the EU, uh, I think they, they, they issued another, another threat to the Turk Reich telling them to stop it or else with, with absolutely no specifics whatsoever given regarding the or else part. So this is from Al Jazeera. Water to Syria's Afrin has now been cut off for a week, the United Nations said on Wednesday, as Turkey's military finished encircling the Kurdish city in preparation for a major ground assault. And when you say major ground assault, can you say hundreds of thousands of civilian dead, uh, which the Turk Reich will embrace. Access to clean drinking water ended after Turkish troops and allied Syrian fighters re... Wow, they won't say what they are. Allied Syrian fighters. These are quote-unquote... Uh, well, basically, they're Islamo-fascist. And, and many within that group of quote-unquote Syrian fighters are actually... Uh, you know, maybe the day before they were fighting for ISIS and now they're fighting for Turkey. You do the math on that one. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, after uh, the clean water was cut off after Turkish troops and ISIS and other Islamofascist groups seized the main dam and water plant from the People's Protection Unit's militias in the Kurd-dominated region of northwest Syria. Local workers were unable to access the dam controls to pump water. The water supply has been cut off. Residents have relied on untreated water from boreholes and risk contacting diseases. Well, I'm sure that the the I'm sure that the Turk Reich is is busted up about that, and and the rest of the world I'm I'm sure you're busted up about that as well. U.S. claims of records not found from FISA requests reaches all-time high. See? Make America great again. See? We can continue to break records like this. This is an awesome... This is not an awesome record to break, by the way. So it looks like a bigly record was set recently as the U.S. government managed to withhold or, quote, misplace, unquote, more records that were sought from FISA requests than ever before. And, and folks... This is what it looks like to be winning in America. And this is from U.S. News. Uh, the federal government censored, withheld, or said it couldn't find records sought by citizens, journalists, and others 
more often last year than at any point in the past decade. Well, okay, so it's not an ultimate absolute record. It's just the record for the last decade. Whatever. According to an Associated, uh, associated Press analysis of new data, the calculations cover eight months under President Trump, the first hints about his administration, uh, how his administration complies with, with with the Freedom of Information Act, with FISA requests. The surge of people who sought records but ended up empty-handed was driven by the government saying more than ever it could not find a single page of requested files and asserting in other cases that it would be illegal under U.S. laws to release the information. People who have asked for records under the Freedom of, Inf Freedom of Information Act received censored files or nothing in 78% of 823,000 requests. Wow. A record over the past decade. Now, I will say a little devil's advocate here. Uh, I would like to see, like, okay, is is the record the percentage or the amount of of rejections or that 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 the request receive? Is it a percentage? If it's a percentage of requests, that's one thing. But if it's the amount, then I'd like to. It would be neat to see, like, a comparison, like, what, what year to year are you comparing this to? Is there, for instance, an incredible spike in requests that would naturally drive the overall numbers up? I don't know. I, so I'm just going to leave that out there as a devil's advocate, but uh, this is not an endorsement of the practice of, of, of not sharing information with the the alleged citizens who are, uh, I believe, it's supposed to be of the people, by the people, for the people, if that's that's how the mythology goes, at least. And apparently, uh, of the people, by the people, for the people, uh, doesn't apply when of the people and by the people and for the people ask for information of, uh, uh, you know, information from the government that is of the people, by the people, for the people. So when it provided no records, the government said it could find no information related to the request. In a little over half those cases, it turned over everything requested in roughly one of every five FOIA requests, according to the AP analysis. Records requests can take months, even years, to get fulfilled. Even then, the government censored documents in nearly two-thirds of cases when it turned over anything. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. Not sure if that's necessarily a Trump thing. I, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a federal government thing. But, but anyway, we're gonna move on to our next headline, and we got something a little bit more pleasant to talk about. Understanding cell sex could lead to more effective nanoparticle and drug therapy. So. This, this is actually going to be our top story today for, for uh, Is Daily. We're doing Is Daily Tuesday on Thursday, and that's because our co-host, Lou Sander, is not... Well, he may show up for a little uh, cameo appearance, but uh, he's not going to be able to be a big part of the show. So we're doing Is Daily Tuesday on Thursday, and we're doing Is Daily Tuesday on Thursday because we didn't do Is Daily Tuesday on Tuesday. Instead, we did Is Daily Monday on Is Daily Tuesday. Wow, it's getting confusing. I think one thing that I have learned from this week is... I'm probably going to come up with a different way of naming these different shows. It's going to be Is Daily Something every uh, every day. <laughs> that way, when something like this happens, it's not so confusing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on Thursday, welcome to Is Daily Tuesday. So anyway, don't question my gender or my sex unless, of course, I'm a cell. If I'm a cell and you can identify my sex... You can design nanoparticles that can more effectively deliver targeted drugs to me that will help my human host. Holy crap. Ladies and gentlemen, I just spent two whole sentences imagining that I was a cell. And listen, I just want to say to you, life was so much simpler as a cell. But... But all kidding aside, this is actually, this is, this is pretty exciting med tech news. Researchers are working on ways to enhance nanomedicine. That's right. That's a thing. Nanomedicine. Get that through your head. Uh, nanomedicine. It's awesome. By understanding the different qualities and conditions of cells based off of the sex of the cell. This is a story from, from NanoWeek. And, of course, NanoWeek is going to cover nanomedicine. That makes sense. 
One of the key issues in nanomedicine is the question of how to effectively transport therapeutical nanoparticles and associated drugs to and into cells. Researchers, uh, I'll give you a Cliff Notes uh, version of this paragraph. Uh, they're, 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 what they're looking at is there's these different qualities uh, between cells and understanding the different qualities of the cells helps them to design nanomaterials that are more effective for certain types of cells. So all of that said, what they've now uh, identified is yet another so far overlooked factor that impacts nanoparticle uptake. In a new study accepted in ACS Nano, effective cell sex on uptake of nanoparticles, the overlooked factor at the nanobio interface. Wow, an exciting title. I know I'm racing off to read that one. An international team of researchers discovered that cell sex is an important overlooked factor at the nanobio interfaces. Okay? Nanobio interfaces. Of course, everybody, you learn that in third grade. Don't act like you don't know what that is. More specifically, depending on their sex, cells respond differently to the same exact type of nanoparticles. Our findings have a capacity to optimize clinical translation of nanoparticles and also to help researchers to better design and produce safe and efficient therapeutic cell-specific nanoparticles. A uh, long name that I can't pronounce said an instructor at the uh, Harvard Medical. You know what? I'm going to give it a try, man. I'm going to give it a try, man. Uh, I, I think I can get it. Ready? Uh, more. And I highlighted it here. So if you're watching on video, you see it. If you're on audio, just trust me. I highlighted the name so people can see. Mortezo Mahmoudi. Okay. Mortezo. Hey, actually, that's a pretty cool sounding name. I like it. I'm changing my name to Mortezo Mahmoudi. It's way better than Paul Gordon. An instructor at Harvard Medical School and the former director of and principal investigator at the Nanobio Interactions Laboratory at Tehran University. Whoa, this is from Iran. Oh, no, they're supposed to be terrorists. I guess not. I guess I guess they got, they got some stuff going on there that's not terrorism. Wow. Maybe we shouldn't bomb them. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, at Tehran University of Medical Sciences tells NanoWork, it has been known that the differences between female and male embryos originate at a very early developmental stage prior to the initiation of hormonal changes. Therefore, genetically and structurally driven sexual dimorphisms are expected at this early stage. So that's, that's pretty cool, man. I like that story. That's a good story. See, there's good stories out there, folks. Lots of good stories out there. And this one's not so good. <laughs> More terrorists from the U.S. headed China's way. Donald Trump may be expanding the tariff list of Chinese imports to include technology and telecommunications. And this is from Japan News, japan-news.com. Trump eyes tariffs on China Tech Telecoms, U.S. Well, you know he's the U.S. president. Uh, the, the orange one, El Orangeo. La, El Orangeo? Can I say El Orangeo? I like it. El Orangeo is seeking to impose tariffs on up to $60 billion of Chinese imports. And we'll tar they didn't write El Orangeo. I added that. And we'll target the technology and telecommunications sectors to people who had discussed the issue uh, with the um, Trump um, um, administration. <laughs> Oh, I really like that. It's not going to work, but I like it. Ump and administration. I'm going to say that from now on for the rest of this show, uh, wherever it comes up, if it does. With the Ump administration said on Tuesday, a third source who had direct knowledge of the administration's thinking said the tariffs associated with a Section 301 intellectual property and Oh, no, my, my peas. Intellectual property investigation under 1974 U.S. Trade Act begun in August last year could come in the very near future. So it's my IPs, man. You know, you, you, you have an idea and then you own it. Except you don't. But, you know, anyway, magic stuff says you do. So that's all that matters. IKEA offers bug versions of meatballs and burgers. Okay, so... Before I get into this, first off, this is your lulls of the day. Just to coach you along, if there was a laugh track, I would insert the laugh track at this part of the show just, just for the folks who don't quite get it. Or really, because I'm not really all that funny, but I try my best. 
But anyway, this is the lulls of the day. But I do want to set this up by saying, you know, if you're a vegan, if you're a vegetarian, man, have at it. I, I got no no issue. I got no beef with you. <laughs> oh, Paul, that was terrible. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. These are the jokes. So <laughs> I, I've set it up. Now I'm going to dive in. Uh, tired of those delicious Swedish meatballs you can get at Ikea? Well, there's a solution from that, and it's from Ikea. The solution is to replace that delicious Swedish meatball, and oh, I do love Swedish meatballs very, very much, with a delicious Swedish Neat ball. That's N as in November, E A T. Neat as in clean your room kind of neat. I just channeled my inner Jordan Peterson and I feel dirty. Uh, I'm moving on. Neat ball. Neat ball. Now don't let the name fool you, folks. It's not neat. It's 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 it actually it's outright hideous, and I say that subjectively so. With with conviction. I might add. I am unanimous in that. The neat ball is made out of uh, uh, bugs. I'm going to say bugs. but I mean, it sounds better to say bugs, but it's a mealworm, so, which is a type of bug, so I'm not wrong. But still, actually, maybe the mealworms is worse. If, if you think bugs, you know, some people eat crickets, you know. But mealworms, you just picture them wriggling and writhing and Look, look like little maggots. They're not maggots, but they look like maggots. So, so I mean, uh, there, there is some vegetable stuff in them, but really, what we're basically talking about, folks, is a ball of mashed up mealworms with a vegetable chaser. Other new culinary delights include a bug burger and herbaceous, herbaceous ice cream. So they're calling this the fast food of the future, but I'm going to call it the yuck of the present. Subjectively so, I might add, and I am unanimous in that. And if you disagree with me, you're weak as water. By the way, that's a reference to a show uh, called uh, Are You Being Served from the uh, 70s on uh, British British TV. And if you don't know what Are You Being Served is, uh, get off my lawn. Still, if mealworms is your thing and vegetarianism or veganism is your thing, this could be good news for you and and again, with conviction, let me say, subjectively so. Iranian relations with Russia strained as a result of Syria war. So the troika that is Iran, Russia, Turkey is being undermined by growing friction between Iran and Russia, as well as between Turkey and Iran. Now, this article that I'm highlighting, it's, it's, it's just about Iran and Russia. But I can assure you, there's, there's friction between Turkey and Iran over this. Iran is actually not really happy about what Turkey is doing in Afrin. It's, 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 uh, it doesn't serve their best interests. The source of the friction is also the source of the formation of the Troika in the first place. And the headline gives it away. The, 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 the war in Syria. And this is from Al Monitor. Iranians are suspicious of Russia's role in Syria and what are seen as Russian attempts to bypass Iran, which has paid a steep price to keep Bashir Assad in power in Damascus. Media outlets' reports seem to play into these fears and doubts of much of the public. Of note, reformist and moderate media outlets are generally in favor of reasonable ties with the West while broadly opposed to Russia, which in their view either blackmails Tehran or bypasses it. Now, you know, a little, little note there, you know, uh, reference the story earlier where I was talking about the, 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 the cell sex story and how that's coming out of Iran. If, if, if you have this idea that Iran is some sort of caveman, backwater, Islamo-fascist state, you really don't know Iran. That's a very, very sophisticated community, uh, culture, whatever you want to call it. These, 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 uh, the, the Iranian people, uh, they're, they're, they're highly skilled, highly intelligent. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool people, actually. In contrast, staunch conservatives and hard hardliners are staunch fans of Russia and consider it as part of their coalition against the United States. So the moderate conservative Tubnok news site, close to a former Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps chief Molan Reze wrote on January 17th, based on an agreement between Russia and Iran and Iranian companies, uh, 
uh, based on an agreement between Russia and Syria, Iran and Iranian companies have been partly put aside from the process of reconstruction and investment in Syria, and consortiums have even been established between Syria and Russia in a number of sectors. And if Iran wants to join the reconstruction process, it should, at first, talk to the Russians. This is not speculation, but rather an issue that has been discussed in the government, and the Iranian government is deeply worried about this. Living and constructed cells fuse to make many chemical factories. Animal and machine have been merged into a mini singularity to produce the end of the universe. No, no, actually, to produce many chemical factories, hence the title. From Science Daily, researchers have fused living and non-living cells for the first time in a way that allows them to work together, paving the way for new applications. The system, created by a team from Imperial College London, encapsulates biological cells within an artificial cell. Using this, researchers can harness the natural ability of biological cells to process chemicals while protecting them from the environment. This system could lead to applications such as cellular batteries, photo powered by photosynthesis, sy synthetics of drugs inside the body, and biological sensors that can withstand harsh conditions. I get through the last uh, few headlines here pretty quickly. California's gun confiscation model goes forward with more selective seizures. And this article really just is about how California is targeting the undesirables and working their way up the list in a way to kind of uh, get people used to the idea of government confiscating guns. France brings lawsuit against Apple and Google in protectionist moves. So the French are looking to bring Apple and Google to heel in an effort to protect their developers and startups. But this isn't protectionism, though. That actually is. And Fox unveils Man v. Robot show. Fox is going to have a show in which humans are going to fight giant robots. 